Yeah, hey, Briley, can you take me through the, the long catch and run that you had from Will there in that play that wound up setting up the touchdown? <laughs> um, well, the last thing that happened was I got caught from behind. So try not, not to let that one happen next time. But, um, no, Will did a great job of staying alive after getting a little bit of pressure, I think, uh, moving around in the pocket and gave me a ball. And I actually think maybe the defender thought I was out of bounds or going out of bounds because he didn't really make a, a – hard tackle um, or effort to push me out of bounds um, and was able to kind of tightrope the sideline and, and get it going. What's your 40 time? Like what's, what's the fastest 40 you've run before? Um, I, I haven't got tested in a long time, so I'm not sure, but I apparently need a little bit of work on it. So <laughs> Appreciate it, Riley. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Kellis? Hey, Briley, given that you're such good friends, with them what uh what, how would you say Skyler's been handling you know having to sit out some time and come back from injury yeah he's I mean he's been very positive and uh he's a great person a great teammate so you know whenever he's been in the building and all times I've been around him his spirits have been high um he's been positive and encouraging us um while he was taking mental reps yesterday at practice uh so it's, you know, just a testament to what type of person he is with how positive he's being in, in the situation. How much confidence do you think the team, I mean, I know, you know, if Skyler can play, you'd love to have him, but how much would you say the team gained confidence-wise in Will being able to win that game last week? Uh, point Blake, Will's a baller. I mean, he showed us that in fall camp. Um, he showed us that in the reps that he's gotten in the past three weeks. Um, one, I think on his first play um, in the first game, he completed a pass. Um, and then to go in the, to that game um, with some pressure and uh, the game on the line and to hold his comp composure the way he did and command the offense the way he did, um, you know, we're not going to blink if that's what the situation is. Um, we don't really know. But, you know, I can tell you from a, a team camaraderie standpoint, um, we got his back and we know that he has our back. So. We're, we're comfortable, whatever happens. Chris. Hey, Briley. Um, what, what can you say about Deuce Vaughn as a teammate and just how impressive has he been just you know, a few games into his career? Um, for the second time, that dude's a baller too. <laughs> um, I mean, me, me, and, uh, me and Deuce lift together on Thursdays on the same platform, and we kind of have a thing going on right now where – um, we say that we have the the good luck platform um, that produces at least one touchdown a game. And I kind of let us up on that in the Oklahoma game, but he said that that play still counts. So we're three games strong. Um, but lifting with him really allows me to see just how mature he is, how much he cares about football. Um, you know, to come in as a true freshman and do the things he's done is just, I mean, it's insane. But at the same time, you know, to the guys, it's not – surprising because the way he's handled himself um, from the day he got on campus um, to fall camp and I mean in the games he's just somebody you really root for and uh, um, you're happy to see him have success because he deserves it. Adam? Briley three games into the season you came in a new team two touchdowns and two of the three games, would you say you expect it to make the kind of impact you're making on the team? Um, you know, coming in, I – with transferring and everything, I tried not to to think too much about, okay, production, I need to do this, I need to do that. Um, you know, I just wanted to come in and, and do what I could to help the team. Um, and, you know, whenever you have a football genius calling the plays like Coach Messingham, um, you know, he – he does a great job of creating mismatches and, and allowing um, players to make plays. And so just mm -hmm. kind of you know, doing what I can and trying to put myself in the best positions that, you know, Coach Messingham asked for and, um, you know, I've been able to have some success early. Um, so, you know, try to, try to keep doing what I can. And with you and the other receivers between Skyler and Will Howard, what would you say is the difference in the chemistry that you guys have with both of the quarterbacks? Um, I wouldn't say there's a ton difference. I mean, the coaching staff, just with everything going on um, because of COVID right now, everybody got reps with the ones group and the twos group and the threes in fall camp. So 
if it's Will that we're going with on Saturday, we all have chemistry with him because of the way that the coaches um, handled fall camp, knowing that at any point because of this virus, somebody can be down and um, it's the next guy up. Uh, that's our mentality. So I think that, you know, because of fall camp and because of the past four weeks, including the bye week, um, you know, we've all gotten a lot of reps with Will. Um, so we're all comfortable uh, with him commanding offense. Do these last two raised hands, starting with Fitz. I'm Bradley, uh, grad transferring has to be a little bit unsettling. I mean, you've been someplace, you've settled in, you've got friends, and then you come to Kansas State. So I guess my question is pretty simple. How much fun are you having playing football at Kansas State? <laughs> I can't even explain it. I mean, it's just – it's unreal. I'm just living out my dreams in real time and knowing that. So it's just – I mean, it's an unreal experience to run out there, even though it's not um, packed like it would be in a normal year. Like, the environment is still just absolutely amazing. The fans are amazing. Um, I enjoy connecting with fans, you know, whether it's a good game message on Facebook or Twitter, whatever it is. Um, I'm just, yeah, like I said, I'm living out my dreams in real time. So it's just, it's insane um, to be having this much fun. And then I think I've said it before, but just the way that the team welcomed me in. Um, you know, there's, you know, there's no, like, you can't, I can't tell that I'm a new guy on the team. Um, whenever we're out on the field, like, you know, the relationships have been made in the past couple months and um, just balling with my bros. Um, you're a guy that has some NFL considerations, but this is a unique situation. You could come back next year if you wanted to. Have you even thought about that? Um, try not to think about it too much. Just trying to, you know, take it one day at a time, um, attack every day. Um, one week at a time and you know down the line I'll start considering and come back a year or um, if it's my time it just I don't know it yeah. all kind of depends I, I haven't paid it much thought yet okay thank you last one here Ryan Black hey Briley I, you know I don't know if we've asked you this yet and it's kind of strange to me so with you having played against North Dakota State when you were at Northern Iowa how many yep. times guys either run things in practice or during the game when you're when you look out there and you're like wow that's exactly what I remember them running at North Dakota State and now I'm on the other side of it does that happen to you pretty often that yeah especially during fall camp or really when I was learning the offense um throughout the summer and um and stuff I'd you know going through installs and I'd see a play and we'd watch film or like you'd have a film on it tagged with it and I'd see and I'd be like okay that makes sense. That's the play that they got us on this year. And, um, you know, Coach Messingham, he's just so – he's a genius when it comes to calling plays and stuff. So just seeing it and running those same plays now, it just – it's kind of funny whenever I sit back and watch and how much I was, you know, when the defense was on the field back when I was at you and I playing against them, I not too happy on the sideline when they'd hit a big, a big touchdown and a guy's just wide open downfield, nobody around him. But – now I see why, and now I see the the structure of the offense and how they get that to happen. And so I laugh sometimes whenever that does come up, like, oh, yeah, I remember that play right there. Whenever there's a game we were up, is actually the same situation as the Oklahoma game. Um, and really why I, I never flinched and I never thought we were going to lose that game was because um, the last time I played this coaching staff when they were at North Dakota State, we were up 21-7 at halftime. And all of a sudden – end of the game we lose by 20 22 something it's just I mean it's insane and it was those type of plays that we have that it's like how do they get this guy downfield wide open nobody see him but now knowing the offense and seeing those plays it's like okay I, I see it now it makes sense it clicks all right let's sneak one more in here with Fitz um Riley this looks like a really fun offense for tight ends. Um, what is there a message you would send to other people about how valuable the tight end is in this offense to Kansas State? Um, I mean, I think if you watch the, the games, you can kind of see it. Coach Messingham and Coach Kleiman also, they just do a great job of, um, you know, using the players that they have. There's no, okay, we're only going to do this no matter who we have. It's okay how can we get mismatches for this guy? How can we get mismatches for this guy? And, you know, some weeks it may be the tight ends on certain plays. Some weeks it's the running backs, the receivers. Um, but, you know, whenever you turn K-State on, you see it. We have multiple tight ends on the field. Um, 
majority of the time. And I just, I really think this is an offense that um, tight ends can be very valuable. in. so, you know, any, any high school guys that are getting recruited, um, you know, don't, I, I'd say just, you know, look into what, we do and look at how much fun that the players are having, not only at tight end, but um, that's something you want. You want to be able to go somewhere and have fun um, while playing football and in the game you love and be around a bunch of great dudes. And that's what it is here from the players to the coaching staff. I mean, it's just a bunch of dudes having fun um, and making plays while we're at it. So, you know, I, I definitely advise any tight ends specifically for your, your question to, uh, to just turn on, turn on one of our games and watch it live and see and see the the things that Coach Messingham does with the tight ends.